This is Kim Bailey with Alzheimer's Orange County, and I uh, we are joining in with our partners to present this webinar today, preparing for the holidays. So I'd like to acknowledge our partners, Care Choices, Hospice and Palliative Services, as well as O'Connor Mortuary and Alzheimer's Orange County. Excuse me. So we appreciate all of you being here. This webinar is a little different than what we normally do uh, monthly. Uh, we have invited our family caregivers to join us today for a special topic. And we also invited our regular attendees to join us as well. So for those of you who are here for the first time, um, welcome. And this is part of a monthly webinar series, a free monthly webinar series that originally was designed uh, for healthcare professionals. But we realized that the topics should be of great interest as well to folks who are caring for a senior or someone with dementia. And so we'd like to invite all of you to attend on a monthly basis and uh, we can send out information about upcoming topics uh, so that you'll get an idea of the type of information that we share. And um, the three sponsors that I mentioned provide these uh, webinars as a service to the community on topics that are really beneficial for anyone, as I said, who cares for or works with older adults. So if you join us every month, I think you'll find the information. Again, we think you'll find it very informative and useful. So we feature different speakers every month. And uh, I, Kim Bailey, am always the host. And today I'm excited because I get to play the dual ro uh, roles of host as well as presenter. So I'll be talking today about preparing for the upcoming holidays through the eyes of a, a family caregiver. Let's go ahead and get started with preparing for the holidays, uh, our family webinar. Um, and I said I'd tell you a little bit about myself. I'm uh, the program and education specialist here at Alzheimer's Orange County. I'm a master's trained gerontologist. Uh, I've been working in the field of older adults and especially Alzheimer's for over 25 years. And uh, it is really my pleasure and an honor to be with you today. So take a look. These are our goals for today. By the end of the presentation, I'm hoping that you'll have a better idea of why the holidays can be difficult for individuals with dementia. We want to identify some strategies for making the holiday events more comfortable for people with dementia. And I want to help you try to strike a balance during holiday related activities, um, you know, while you're caring for your own needs as well as those of your loved one. And I can tell you right now that my best advice for all of you, and I'll kind of reiterate this as we go along, is that I just want you to slow down. Um, you know, slowing down is going to, and modifying is going to make it easier on the person you're care, caring for, and it's going to make things less stressful for you because we typically experience this holiday as a time of high activity and high stress. So we want to slow it down because I need you to find a good balance um, between taking care of your loved one and taking care of yourself. And so, uh, and then I'll just at the end spend a few minutes talking about um, really a special message for family members who have their loved ones living in a residential care facility. I don't know if that applies in particular to people who are online with us now. Um, it's not only residential care facilities, but it could also be um, folks that are participating in adult day services as well. So I'll just, just I'll spend a few minutes talking about that. So with that, we will get started. 
And you know, this is a little video that we often show that describes the process of Alzheimer's disease, and I think I'm gonna skip over that today because I my sense is that most of you uh, are well versed in how Alzheimer's affects the brain. Uh, most of us know that um, a series of structures called plaques and tangles begin to form first in the hippocampus area, the area that really is responsible for um, taking in and saving new memories and from there, so therefore affecting short-term memory. And there afterwards a gradual kind of march through the other areas of the brain um, that are responsible for other things like communication and mobility, et cetera, emotion. So we know that this is a brain disease, um, and I think that the most important thing we can learn about the illness is that as it uh, progresses, behavior uh, is no longer a choice for those loved ones that we are caring for. And so when we see behaviors, particularly you know during a high stress time like the holidays, we have to keep in mind that um, if we get upset about it, we have to blame the disease and not the person, of course, that we're caring for, be just by sheer virtue of their diagnosis. And if you look at this simple slide, and we use this slide often in our family education, you know, you sort of start on the left-hand side there where it says confusion because that typically is where they live. They, they do, in fact, live in a state of confusion. And while some days are better than others, um, even if they're just early, if they're really early stage, there's always sort of that level of confusion present. And we know as human beings that when we are confused, we start to feel uncomfortable. And when we experience discomfort, that can often spill over into behaviors. So, you know, you sort of keep that in mind um, as you're caring for someone. And we have tools that we use to sort of break this cycle and mitigate um, things, you know, halfway through. If we can learn ways to make people feel more comfortable, then we're not going to see as much evidence as behavior. Uh, we're not going to see as much evidence of behaviors reoccurring on an ongoing basis. And so... Um, Keep this in mind, of course, and I'll reference it again as we talk through our slides today. So why are the, the holidays difficult for people living with dementia? Um, it's pretty easy for anyone, but particularly people with dementia, to become overstimulated, um, just overwhelmed, more confused or anxious due to these changes that we were just talking about in the brain. So um, you look at a normal day and then you look at a day during the holidays and you can see where everything just kind of ramps up and that person that you're caring for may seem even more anxious or confused than they normally do. And there are triggers uh, for these behaviors that we just referenced to uh, sort of go off uh, more frequently than, they, than you normally see them. So take a look at these triggers. I mean, a lot of times behaviors are caused by too much activity. There's a, a hustle and a bustle, you know, a commotion, new unusual noises uh, and sounds. Maybe there's too many people going in and out, uh, visitors who the person with dementia doesn't normally see, um, changes in routine, and difficulty later on in the day. Of course, we call that sundowning. Um, days are long. They tend to be long and full. People are in and out of different environments, and then, of course, their own home environment often changes, um, you know, decorations, more noise, visitors, etc. cetera. Uh, it's, it's easy to become fatigued, uh, confused about what's going on. And, and then there's, of course, the stress that people with dementia are under to 
perform, quote unquote perform, uh, to recognize people and differentiate all of these activities. So that all is, you know, all any and all of these things can become a trigger for some type of reaction. As well, due to their memory loss, um, the person with dementia may have difficulty engaging in conversations and tracking them. Uh, they may be repeating themselves more than they normally do. As I said, uh, they may not recognize friends and family members, or they may confuse a person with another um, calling them by the wrong name. And then this one I want to spend a minute talking about because I think it's extra painful for families is that they no longer really grasp um, the significance sometimes of personal holiday traditions. And so I think all of us are a bit ritualistic when it comes to the holidays and we've all um, formed, um, I don't know, traditions over the years that we look forward to and we attach a lot of meaning to those rituals and traditions and then it becomes very painful when the person we're caring for uh, seems to be indifferent to those uh, time-held traditions. So, you know, I'm going to pause right here and remind everyone to be extra patient and understand that the person that you're caring for wishes it could be different as well. And so um, just don't take these things personally and uh, understand that it's the disease process and not your loved one. It's really super important to keep everyone's expectations in line with the reality of where your person is in their disease progression. And so, you know, if you have uh, visitors coming in or family members, uh, it's important to uh, get everyone sort of on the same page. So it makes sense to express any concerns that you may have um, about the event. Now, this could be an event that you're planning in your home, or it could be a holiday party that you and your spouse or family member with dementia are attending. Just make sure that everyone understands uh, the person with dementia's situation and doesn't have unreal, unrealistic um, expectations of them. So we're talking here about uh, preparing visitors um, and preparing people that you expect to see. And partic in particular, you know, family members should be contacted in advance. Uh, and sometimes this could maybe take place over a joint call, some kind of a conference call, or just make a note to mention to everyone uh, let them know sort of what your loved one's condition is these days. Perhaps they haven't visited for a long time and perhaps your person was super early stage in the beginning and now they've advanced more. So it makes sense to sort of let them know you have to be an educator and an advocator, don't you? So you need to let them know that it's possible, for example, that the person you're caring for is not, may not recognize them or they may forget uh, what role that, that visitor plays in their life. That can lead to very painful um, situations. And so forewarning people is something that's going to make everything easier for them and for you and the person that you care for. And you know, you have to keep your expectations in line with reality too, don't you? So I think a lot of us, um, when you see, you're seeing the person every single day and you know, caregivers aren't always in tune with changes. It's sort of hard to be objective about that. 
And so when you think about, you know, like how things went last year, you know, maybe there's some changes in your loved one's condition now that you have to personally prepare yourself for. So the goal should be to keep things simple um, for your loved one and for yourself. And we'll keep and we'll talk about some ways that we can make that happen. Don't push. Do not push to do more than you can reasonably manage. This kind of goes against the grain, doesn't it? With most caregivers that I know. And just overall, in this country, our sort of expectations about the holidays. We, I think we have a, a history of doing more than we can reasonably manage. And so I just want you to think about, you know, just ratcheting it down a little bit, making things a little less complex. And keep in mind that extra frills are not likely to be noted you know, by the person with dementia. And they may not be needed. So, in fact, there is no need to include all of the usual things that you do. And you might want to think about some of the things you want to keep in place and, how you know, think about how you can modify them or simplify them or try something new, something, again, that makes it easier on them thereby making it easier on you. So simplify, um, just overall, you need to simplify uh, holiday plans and streamline tasks uh, to reduce stress. Think small instead of big when it comes to holiday activities. And also think short instead of long. Um, and so, you know, perhaps you always, I'm going to just make something up here. Uh, perhaps you always drive around and look at all the Christmas lights um, and you go, you know, 30 miles. Well, just maybe take a little drive around the neighborhood or maybe even a walk. So think small, think short instead of big and long. Make a list in advance, just nothing fancy, just jot down some of your priorities and you know it's sort of like a retuning of your own expectations and that takes a little practice so just take a few minutes and have a cup of coffee um, and just retune retune that you know sort of your list give yourself permission not to be perfect um, you do not have to create the perfect holiday event I think some of you may be hearing my phone ringing in the background. If that's the case, I do apologize. I'm not sure how to make that stop. <laughs> so we'll just ignore the uh, distraction. So we're still talking about how to simplify. Um, and I think this is really a major point that I want to make is to encourage friends and family to visit, but limit the number of visitors at any one time. Um, you know, and, and maybe people are not all going to stay with you. Maybe all of your life you've had a house full of people uh, over the holidays. And so this is a time when I'm going to encourage you to downsize that a bit um, and uh, limit the, the hours of time that people are with you and the overnights, maybe just downsize that a bit. Be gentle with yourself and others. And you see the words there, try not to should. <laughs> and that means, you know, you get to the, the day of the, your family dinner or some other event and you're like, oh, I should have decorated more, or I should have planned a different menu, or I should have done this, or I should be doing that. You know, it's not productive, and it's just going to make you feel more stressed. So you want to be kind to everyone, but most of all, I'm imploring you to be kind and gentle with yourself. And maybe think about identifying some folks who can add a little support to your days. 
Um, you may even come up with a list of specific tasks that we could that they can help with. See, I said we. I'm already offering to help. <laughs> um, here are some more ideas just for modifying and downsizing. Uh, you can plan an earlier lunch or maybe a brunch instead of an elaborate evening meal because I'm going to mention sundowner time again. Uh, that's that time in the late afternoon when the light begins to, begins to change and shadows are falling and many folks with dementia become more confused, maybe even a little agitated. So maybe rather than having an evening meal like you always do, you could do something earlier when you know that the person you're caring for is at their best. Uh, how about a potluck or maybe ordering from Gelson's or another grocery store rather than insisting on preparing all your special recipes from scratch? Um, potlucks are really fun. You get to try different things and it's a way of getting everyone involved and taking the pressure off of you. Focus on past holiday memories by sharing uh, photos, stories, and just reminiscing together. I love the photo bit especially because your loved one with dementia may have trouble remembering some of these things. Um, however, most people when they're in the early and moderate stages can really draw on their long-term memory. And when you start reminiscing, that's something that they can uh, really participate in. But having the photo images, I think the visuals are really key to making that successful as well. So just envision here, if you will, that really nice potluck midday and then just sitting in the living room and being close and talking about memories of Christmas past. It's a nice scenario that I think is a lot, uh, you have a lot better chance of seeing that increased agitation or confusion that can come with having an elaborate evening planned. Um, another idea, if you are a Christmas celebrator, uh, you might want to put together a special stocking for the person with dementia and ask guests to write little notes uh, or designate special photos or memories to put inside. And then as the person um, opens the stocking, you can read all of the little notes together. So again, just a simple um, activity that brings a lot of pleasure, I think, to everyone. There we go, I got a little stuck there. Um, and I want to pause just for a moment to remind everyone who's listening in, in case you got here late, a little late, I, you are all on mute, but you have the ability and we encourage you to ask questions. And you can do that by just putting your question into the chat box. So uh, we encourage you to do that. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about how we can involve the person with dementia uh, in holiday planning and even the execution of, you know, different events, etc. Because uh, we certainly don't want to leave our person on the sidelines. So when possible, uh, we are going to try some manageable uh, and safe just sort of right-sized holiday preparation activities uh, that we can introduce into their normal routine. And it can be anything from having a discussion about what are we going to do, what are we going to plan, what's that going to look like. Um, it could be advanced food preparation, um, uh, baking together. Uh, uh, gift wrapping, and remember, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Gift wrapping, putting up decorations, setting the, the table for dinner or for lunch, 
those kinds of tasks uh, really help the person to feel to be a part of things and to feel productive. Um, and while we can incorporate some past holiday rituals, uh, it's wise, as I've been saying, to plan on some simplified activities. So things like just watching um, a holiday movie together, something like It's a Wonderful Life or other holiday movies, uh, singing holiday songs together as a family, or looking at photo albums with past celebrations in them. We want to try at all times to keep the bustle, hustle, bustle level low to avoid agitation and excess confusion. I know that for me, when I entertain, I sort of love the hubbub. Um, you know, that's kind of a sign that everybody's talking and having fun. But in terms of dementia, we want to sort of keep that commotion level uh, as low as we can uh, to help our people, our folks with dementia. We want to plan for fewer visitors. You know, let's focus on uh, quality visitors rather than quantity. And we may want to reduce visits to, uh, you know, make them shorter, make them quieter, and sort of plan those visits at times of the day. Uh, when the person that you're caring for is at his or her best. So that might be morning or afternoon. Everyone's different. But again, we're sort of wanting to avoid the sundowning time of day. Keep your person's uh, normal routine in place as much as possible because people that are living, people who are living with dementia really do seem to respond to routine and structure in their days. And so we want to keep that in place as much as possible. We want to be watchful uh, for signs that frustrations are growing or see if person's becoming a little bit more anxious and really be sort of on the lookout and ready to move the person with dementia to a smaller quieter area if needed. And so I think it's just important to sort of have a plan B, um, whether it be for when you're visiting or going to other people's celebrations or whether you're at home, you want to sort of have a, a backup plan. And I know most caregivers just operate that way automatically. And so it's just sort of good to remind us that that's still needed. We want to keep decorations uh, sort of low-key, um, avoid clutter. Uh, bright blinking lights can be, uh, can trigger behaviors. I know for me, they're jarring, a bit jarring. And so, um, you know, lots of people sort of find them um, a little bit you know, over the top anyway. So we want to just keep things subtle, low key. And of course, they can still be very beautiful when we do that. And just overall, we want to keep the the atmosphere and the, amb and the ambience calm and very pleasant. So in terms of making those with dementia more comfortable when it comes to communication, we want to continue to speak slowly, clearly, and maintain um, eye contact when we're talking to the person with dementia. That's just our standard operating uh, procedure as caregivers, but it becomes even more important uh, over the holidays when the environment is shifting and things are changing. So we're not going to criticize, obviously, or correct or argue with them. Um, you know, so we might go to a friend's uh, celebration. We go there every year. And when we walk in, your loved one says, I've never been here before. Uh, so we, wanna, we want to uh, quell that, uh, that desire to 
reply by saying, what are you talking about? We come here every year. You know what I'm talking about. Those kinds of things just unsettle the person with dementia uh, even more, and they're really pointless. So just like always, we sort of go with the flow and agree with them even when they're saying things that aren't true. And this is just the way we operate from day to day, but again, it becomes more and more critical at uh, what can be perceived as a high stress time. If your person does start to get agitated, uh, we need to distract them or redirect them. Um, maybe that can be with a favorite activity or maybe you just need to excuse yourselves and go for a little walk um, or go out on the patio. Um, you know your loved one well and in many of our education sessions we've talked about how um, beneficial it can be just to keep in the back of your mind a very short list of act soothing activities that you know can sort of bring them back to that feeling of contentment if they get agitated. So keep that little list in play. Um, to prevent emotional or physical exhaustion, which as we all know is so easy to do during the holidays, we all get exhausted. So we suggest that you limit events to two hours or less. Uh, otherwise, you you may start to see some behavioral effects that, of course, we don't want you to have to deal with. Um, if your person is in the habit of taking a regular nap, set aside, make sure you keep setting aside that time for one and for yourself as well. Uh, schedule activities earlier in the day. Again, here we're talking about sundowning again. Um, we want to try and avoid uh, that evening confusion that is so common for people who are living with dementia. So what about gifts? So this, you know, this is a really personal topic um, and I don't, you know, have a, long, a list of things for you to select, but I do have a few ideas. And you know your person, so we use a person-centered approach to selecting gifts. And that just simply means that we're going to figure out what kinds of gifts are best based on what we know about the person, their likes and their dislikes, the things that they are able to do, etc. And so... Um, we want, we want, of course, to buy gifts, to select things that are meaningful. And I do understand that that gets more difficult uh, as the person progresses through the illness. So here's just a couple of ideas. Um, if your loved one, uh, the person you're caring for is early stage, sometimes um, memory aids like day planners um, might be a good gift medication holders, uh, photo albums. I really like the small photo albums where you can put about 12 different photos in there. Um, you could put that together for them. Uh, maybe your gift might involve some newer technology such as a jitterbug uh, cell phone that's so easy to use for people with memory impairments could be music. The gift of music is great actually for all stages. Art supplies. Um, most of you know about our Memories in the Making art program and so we're always encouraging our folks with dementia in any stage of their illness to paint their memories. Um, that's just a lot of fun so that might be a great idea too. For moderate stage, so someone who's moved on out of early stage um, and they're more middle stage now could be gift of clothing. Um, I know that the the person who I cared for for six years, I would buy her really cute sweat outfits, sweats and um, cute tops and she loved getting new uh, clothing like that and the clothing was comfortable. She could wear it at any time and 
I always bought bright colors, and so it could be something like that with the pull-on pants, etc. cetera. Um, gift cards for the hair salon or maybe to go and get nails done might be a fun uh, gift. Again, the gift of music, maybe outings to favorite places. Um, it could be a bird feeder if that person um, likes to sit on the patio or in the garden. And that's a meaningful activity for people really in any stage to feed and watch the birds. Photo books again. Nature and animal videos can bring hours of enjoyment. For later stage individuals, uh, the gift of pet therapy, even like stuffed animals or if that person is later stage dolls, just sometimes people just like to have something really cuddly to hang on to. So um, I don't think it's inappropriate for people um, or not dignified. I think it's good. I think it's a good idea to uh, purchase things like the dolls and the stuffed animals, um, or even throw blankets, just some anything soft and cuddly, because I think for late stage, the tactile type of gifts, things that they can touch and feel and cuddle with are really great. Um, flowers, beautiful flowers, fragrant uh, lotions for massage, or could be a hand massage. And so, I hope this this is a very short list, but again, if you just think about the things um, that your loved one enjoys and maybe take to heart some of these ideas, and you might have ideas of your own. In fact, if you do, please put them in the chat box and that way I can share them with everyone. So um, I just don't want gift buying to be a point of stress for you. So um, again, I'm not sure if anyone, how many of you who are online with us today have their loved one living in a um, com care community or maybe using adult day services, but just a couple of tips for you. Uh, remember that a holiday is still a holiday, whether it's celebrated at home or at a care community. And families can help plan and contribute and participate in the holiday activities that are taking place in the care community uh, or in the adult day service center where the um, person is participating. So it's good to get involved in those uh, in those activities. And if you're again, if your loved one is living um, in long-term care. You can bring a favorite holiday food and share it. Um, bring it to share with other residents and with staff. Uh, sing holiday songs, ask if other residents can join in. Um, holiday sing along really brings cheer and puts smiles on everyone's faces, including your own. You can read a favorite holiday story or poem out loud. Uh, and remember, you can keep this visit or multiple visits short and simple, and that's okay. It's actually better for your loved one in a care community uh, and limit the number of visitors each time to avoid overloading the resident um, and, and increasing their confusion. So plan visits for times of day that are best for your loved one living in long-term care. And I guess one of the things I just want to kind of emphasize is that at this point, the holiday is going to mean more to you, the family member, it possibly, than it does to the person that you love with dementia. And so, I am going to cautiously say this. It's okay if you don't spend all day and evening with them. Their sense of time is different than your sense of time. So I want you to give yourself to, uh, permission 
to plan the visits, um, you know, accordingly, and to remember that keeping them short and simplified is really uh, better. It's best for your loved one living in long-term care. Um, and you can consider, you know, actually celebrating at the care community as an alternative to bringing your loved one home. This can be another painful kind of benchmark in the disease when you realize the hard way that the person you love living in long-term care is sometimes better off staying at the care community because it has in fact become their home. They are in fact in a routine there and moving people around a lot, it can be stressful to them. And also being back at your home may be too overstimulating for them. So, you know, there's sort of a phenomenon that we see in people with dementia, and that is their uh, desire to quote unquote want to go home. And painfully, what we've learned is that sometimes when we hear that and take them home when they've been living in long term care, when they get to our home, they again can say, I want to go home. And that's just really tough on families. So consider, you know, moving your short and limited but meaningful activities to the care community rather than bringing them home to stay. Um, and, you know, this is the time when you can start doing things that are less elaborate. You know, start a new tradition with the person you care for. Um, and again, this reminder that, uh, and I, I'm just, I'm being really sensitive with my words and I don't want to hurt anyone, but the reality is that if a, if a family's planning to spend the whole day at the care community, they should realize that they are in effect doing this for themselves, um, you know, for their own self because most people with dementia really have that limited awareness of time that I already mentioned. And so a two hour visit is perfectly appreciated and perfectly appropriate uh, for your loved one who's living in a residential care facility or another type of long-term care facility. Okay, so what I would like for you to keep in mind is that although that the holiday will not be quote unquote the same, I think that being open and acknowledging the loss, you know, recognizing the importance of your loved one's present and honoring memories together of the past can really help to create a safe emotional climate for this year and times to come. And so this could be, you know, your mantra that what you want to do is just really create that safe emotional climate for your loved one and to accept that that's the new normal when it comes to um, celebrating the holiday season together. So just remember, holidays are really just great opportunities to just be with your loved ones. And so if you can just focus there on being truly with your inner circle and your loved ones and perhaps eliminate some less meaningful activities or events, uh, from your calendar, it may make things easier, not only for your loved one, but of course for you as well. And so just try to make these celebrations simple. It's going to help both of you. Just keep your focus on enjoying the time together. Um, and remember that the person with dementia is really not going to benefit from fancy details. It's just more about the shared time and the intimacy. And be truly present. 
because you know the present may be all that we have with that person that we care so much about and that person we care for with memory loss. The holidays are a super busy time. Just remember, you can only do so much and you really must take care of yourself so that you're in the best shape to take care of others. And I would like to encourage all of you to treat yourselves to something enjoyable and let go of some of the stress that unfortunately is so we identify so closely with the holiday season. Downsize, treat yourself, take care of yourself, and let go of the stress. Set your own limits. Be clear about them with others. If people push back, um, for example, someone may say, hey, guess what? I'm coming in to stay with you for two weeks. Just say that won't work and be clear about why and if and don't wiggle on it. Um, you don't have to live up to the expectations of friends or relatives. Your situation is different now and they need to respect that. If you receive invitations to celebration that are really not uh, what you deem to be appropriate for your loved one, why not consider going by yourself if the event is something that you'd like to do? Think about attending by yourself. You can ask a trusted friend or relative to stay with your loved one while you're out. And that's what I call, you know, a treat to yourself that is so well earned because all of you uh, work so, so hard. Um, to uh, make life easier for the person you're caring for. So uh, this has uh, marked the end of our slides and I'm going to check the question box to see if anyone has left any questions for me. And if you have any questions, please type them into the chat box now. Let's see if we have anything here. Uh, I found a couple reminders here, logistical things. Uh, I need to mention that there were no CEUs given today in the event that there are professionals on the line with us. Uh, normally, we do award a continuing education unit, but since today's uh, session was for family caregivers, there are no uh, CEs. I also want to remind, I, I, I don't think I mentioned this at the beginning, we will ask you to fill out a brief evaluation. That evaluation will pop up on your screen after you exit, after you end the webinar and exit, you will get that pop right up on your screen. And if for some reason you don't, we will be um, emailing that to you. And so we'd love to get your feedback, particularly today, because it is our first family webinar. And we want to know if you enjoyed it or if it was helpful. And we'd like to get your suggestions for additional topics that you would like to hear. Okay. So with that, I am not seeing any additional questions. So I think I'll go ahead there, and... There is one uh, that just came up. Oh, there. Oh, that's our technician, Michelle. Michelle, for some reason, I'm not seeing it. So can you okay. read it to me? Yes. Um, Kathy said, my mother's 86th birthday is coming up in January, and I was wondering whether to invite family members along with grandkids to join us for a luncheon at her living facility. Would this celebration be too much for her? I think if she's living in a care community, it would be a great idea to have lunch with her there in her setting. Um, and even though she may not remember everyone's name or, you know, possibly even what, you know, who they are, I think that 
you know, sometimes being around grandkids can be very joyful. So you might want to talk to the uh, care community where you where she lives, because some of these uh, places have private dining rooms. You could maybe even arrange to have a little private lunch and celebration. So yes, the answer is yes. I think that that may be nice as long as you keep it sort of short and not not too complicated. So yes, celebrate the birthday even if she doesn't remember it. Here's one more for you, uh, Kim. Do folks with dementia respond well to name tags? Yes. I actually think that that is a wonderful idea, whether you're um, in your own home having an event um, or whether, again, they're living in a, in a care community. That just takes so much pressure off of people with dementia to have that visual. And so, you know, the other thing that I would mention is in addition to name tags, I just always introduce myself, um, even if it's, you know, someone that's known me a long time. So I'll just walk in and say, hey, it's Kim. I've come to celebrate your birthday, and I'm so happy to see you. Um, we want to do everything we can to give prompts and cues to family members who, who have memory loss. And um, the name tags I love. And so, yes, and then just also reintroducing ourselves. That's all. Okay. Well, with that, I want to thank all of you for participating today. Again, we'd appreciate you taking the brief time that it takes to fill out an evaluation. And I want to, all of us, on behalf of our sponsors, um, O'Connor Mortuary, Care Choice Hospice and Palliative Services, and Alzheimer's Orange County, we'd like to wish you our best wishes for happy and blessed holidays. Goodbye.